Buenos dias. Today is Thursday, the 26th of May. Hello. Annyeonghaseyo. And as they say in Tokyo, Ohio. Hello. How are you? I pray you're having a good day today. So I told you that when we finish 1 John, we're in 1 John 5. We're going to do a couple of verses today. When we get done, we're going to go to Galatians so you can start reading it. Why don't you do uh, uh, something I've learned to do. It's helped me. Maybe it'll help you. Read the first chapter of Galatians in your favorite translation, the one you use. Then read it the same chapter through in another translation and maybe read it over again in one of those translations. So read it like th three times, Galatians, one. And then have a little pencil and write in the margin of your Bible any thoughts you have. And uh, we're going to really get into it and learn a lot. So now here's our verses for today. First John 5, verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. We talked about that yesterday. God wants us to have assurance. John wants the believers to know you're not hoping you'll make it. You're not hoping you'll get ahead, go to heaven. You, you, and there's no purgatory. No purgatory. If you have the Son, you have life. Your sins are forgiven. If you don't, you don't have life. And no fires for 10,000 years in purgatory are going to change anything because there is no purgatory. There's life. There's the earth. There's the afterlife. There's heaven, hell. Let's keep it to what the scripture says. So assurance. Come on, let's be sure today. If you're not sure, like, am I a Christian? Christ came today. I don't know. Ooh, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith when this program is over. Get along with the Lord. Say, Lord, where am I? Am I really born again or am I a churchgoer? Am I a religious person trying to do good works? And don't forsake the assembling of yourselves, as is the habit of some. Don't do that. We all need the, the encouragement, as many times as we can get it each week, because... The perseverance of the, of the saints is made up of 10,000 new beginnings. We falter, we stumble, we get back up, we worship, we get encouraged, we serve God, we minister. Then we need a refreshing. Yeah, that's the way it works. So now the next verse, here we go, something new, verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. He's talking about confidence, knowing that you are a child of God and that we have eternal life. Now from that, he says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now we're talking about confidence in prayer. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So now he's laying down a major, not every requirement for right kind of praying, but he lays down an important one. Let's just talk about a couple. So the Bible says when we pray, let's spend a little time on this. When we pray, if, we, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. So one of the requirements of prayer, John talks about it here in another chapter, um, uh, here, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, this is chapter three. Uh, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him everything we ask. So one of the things is you gotta have a clear conscience. You can't be embezzling from your, from your job or hating your next door neighbor, or uh, going on social media and destroying people, and then saying, Lord, I need you today. No, can't do it. Can't do it. How many people are wasting their time by praying while they're practicing disobedience? It didn't say perfection. But you have to have your heart right with God. 
and he'll search us. Remember that thing where Jesus said, if you have ought against your brother and you bring a sacrifice, don't put the sacrifice down. Leave the sacrifice and go over and make it right with your brother. How are you going to make a proper sacrifice when you're fighting like a cat and a dog with your friend? So a clear conscience. And the Bible also tells us we have to pray in faith. It's the prayer of faith that gets answers. So we can't be doubting and tossed back and forth, like James says, like a wave, a storm. No, 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 no. We got to have faith. Linked to that, though, the faith is what John brings out. We know this. We have the same confidence that we have eternal life, that we can approach God, and we know that if we ask according to the will of God, he will hear us. If we ask outside of the will of God, there's not a promise he'll hear us. In other words, trust me, God is not confining us to little things, but they have to be in the will of God. You can't, like, you don't like your mother-in-law. Lord, she has the flu. Could you keep it there with that flu? In fact, maybe the temperature of one degree. Let's just heat that baby up one more degree because my mother-in-law is such a pain. She's interfering in our marriage. That's not the will of God. God doesn't want us gambling. Lord, help me to hit the number. I've blown $1,000 on this thing, but just the number, Lord, please. The new Mercedes that you saw might not be God's will for your life, so you can't ask for it outside of God's will. So as we search the Word of God, we find out what the will of God is. And as we find out the promises and what His will is, we can ask boldly, and we know He hears us because we're asking in connection with His plan for our life. Sometimes the Holy Spirit reveals something to us, and we know, I am now being guided. Romans 8, we know not how we ought to pray, but the Spirit helps us. Sometimes with groans too deep to be uttered. So as the Spirit helps us and guides us into God's will, and as the Word instructs us, we have confidence God is listening to this prayer. I'm not praying in vain. I'm not praying some selfish, frivolous thing. Remember what James says? You ask, but you don't receive because you ask amiss, wanting to consume it on your selfish desires. So we lay down this first principle. We're going to continue it tomorrow. We're going to learn a lot about victorious praying, praying that gets answers. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.